morning start on St. Patrick's Day as the first pitch comes in and it's a called strike. It's nothing in one. This might be one of the earliest starts we've had, JJ. This weather all year has just really disrupted schedules from the beginning. Mother Nature has had different plans all season and particularly this weekend as Penta's quickly ahead of nothing in two. We were anticipating Friday, Saturday and Sunday getting some softball in. Friday got rained out. Both games were played yesterday, but some thunderstorm threats later this afternoon. They wanted to get this game in, so we'll start early. Next pitch hit on the ground. Leck fields and steps on the bag for out number one as Arkansas's Reagan Johnson is retired. And if you're Auburn and Maddie Penta, that is exactly the start you're looking for. Gets ahead 0-2. I mean, Johnson hit it pretty hard, but then Leck get in front of it, getting the first out. It's going to be big to keep her off base today. And finding a way for Pinta to get into a rhythm and settle in, as you talked about, Amy, yesterday gave up four runs in that opening inning. This pitch is hit to right field. Tresvik puts it away. And just like that, five pitches into the afternoon, and Auburn's already got two outs. You can't ask for a better start right here if you're Auburn. And now we'll see Bree Ellis step into the batter's box. Ellis playing for Auburn her first two years of college softball. Transferring to Arkansas now. A native of Houston, Texas. Transferred a little bit closer to home. But you see her numbers already on the season and she's having a monster year so far. Called strike right there. You know, Coach Dyfel said she went into Arkansas and was like, I want to be a little more of a complete hitter, meaning I, you know, I don't want to be known for just the long ball, and she's done just that. She's worked on driving it to the gaps, maybe not a singles hitter, maybe more of a doubles home run hitter, but has really continued to elevate her game. Two and one the count now. Ellis also patient in the batter's box. She's already got 16 walks on the season. Maddie Pence has got to be careful with what she offers. Ellis now ahead, three balls and a strike. And that's tough. If you're Maddie Penta, you come out and you get the first two hitters out and then you make a pitch like that that's really, really close and it kind of changes the count for you there. Instead of going 2-2, you go 3-1 on a, on a pitch. If you're Maddie Penta, you think it's a strike. A walk to Bree Ellis puts her on first and Arkansas has a two-out base runner. So Ellis safely aboard at first, and it'll bring Kennedy Miller up to the plate. Talk about power, the freshman from Georgetown, Texas. Two home runs yesterday in game two of the series. I mean, what she's done up to this point is just unreal. Like top five in all of D1 softball in categories. And is, I mean, 452, six home runs, 24 RBIs. That's and a freshman. Miller held up there. Two balls and no strikes as Anna Wollers will walk the softball back out to the circle there. That's something to watch here today. Wollers making just her second start of the season behind the plate catching. She started the very first game of the year, but then other than that, she's been playing third base. And here today, she's back behind the plate at catcher. Yeah, we saw the lineup had to do a double check. I'm like, <laughs> JJ, what's happening here? And you're like, yeah, she, she's done it before. And that was a really good veteran move right there to come out because it looked like Penta's getting a little frustrated not getting those strikes after again. <laughs> again, I'm not sure where that pitch is missing because if you have to bring that in, a ball over the plate, these Arkansas hitters will make you pay. So Kennedy Miller ahead of the count, three balls and no strikes. A 452 batting average to start her college career. There's a strike right down the middle. Three one pitch on the way. 
and a called strike. Maddie Pinta back in rhythm. She's made the count full. This is a really big pitch here, JJ. Full count, I know it's early, but this is a big pitch for Pinta. Payoff offering. There's a swing and a miss and the first strikeout. Rose Roach will lead it off as we just saw the opening lineup for Auburn. And we're underway here in the bottom of the first inning. Rose Roach had herself a three hit game yesterday and is now leading off. Is Auburn switching up the batting order just a little bit. We talked about the defensive changes. There's a lot of offensive changes too. I think after yesterday, Coach Dean was like, listen, we're gonna mix it up here and find something that'll work today. So a one and one count to Rose Roach. She's playing second base this season for Auburn. Now in her junior year. Robin Heron in the circle pitching for Arkansas. And this one, this is low for ball two. Game two yesterday, Auburn out hit Arkansas. Eight hits for the Tigers, just seven for the Hawks. But the home runs were a big difference and Auburn unable to manufacture runs. Arkansas won the first game of the series six to one and then game two by a score of five to one. Yeah, like you said, they, Auburn was getting the hits, getting on base, it's just they were missing that timely hit. A 3-1 to Rose Roach, nearly hit her, but she'll take the walk. Lead off runner aboard. Here's Robin Heron, the sophomore from Tampa, Florida. The lefty started game two yesterday and is getting the start once again here today. Her 11th start of the season. What can we expect out of Heron? Well, you know, she's going to live in the 60s, low 60s, but she can throw any pitch and any count and, you know, can work up and work down. Abby Smith, the batter, tries to lay down a bunt, and she wants that one back. It was popped up directly into the air and caught by Hannah Gamble. Yeah, when you're playing station to station, trying to manufacture a run early and set the tone, that's it's tough when you can't get the sack down. Let's look at Nikki Dean pacing back and forth in that Auburn dugout. Wollers, the batter for Auburn. And there's a big cut. Auburn's catcher, as we said, making just her second start of the season behind the plate. She started every game this year for Robert, just the majority of them at third base. Yeah, and has done a heck of a job over there, but again, I think it's a, a matter of Coach Dean here trying to find a lineup and players that will give them the best chance for success, and it looks like that means mixing it up right here. A one and one count to Wollers. You know, and having said that, JJ, uh, the, Auburn's had a lot of rainouts. You know, teams use the first part of the season to find a lineup, see what works best. And I mean, really, the Auburn Tigers are behind the eight ball in that aspect because of how many games they've lost. And I think they still are trying to find a lineup. The one, two. Throws Anna Wollers and she goes down looking. What a pitch that was from Robin Heron. Beautiful. And you can just see the change up. I mean, she takes a lot off there. And I, I think if I'm in the dugout and I'm Maddie Penta, I'm going, that's a really good pitch, but it looked a little bit, it looked a little outside. I didn't get that one. Yeah. Two outs for KK McCreary. This is outside the zone for ball one. McCreary plays left field and in the designated player spot today for the Tigers. She's been the leadoff batter this entire season, but now moving up into the cleanup spot. Auburn looking to find ways to generate offense. Yeah, I really don't think that 250 batting average tells the story of uh, what she's done. I mean, 439 on base percentage, and she, she really was, kind of was setting the table there for Auburn at the top, and again, I think it's a matter of now she can be in a spot where she can drive some runs in. Two balls and a strike. The count to McCreary. 
She'll hit this one well to left field. That ball's off the wall. Rose Roach will race around to third. How about that? A two out double for KK McCreary. What a swing. I gotta say, JJ, I don't want to take anything away from this double because that, I mean, that was awesome, but you gotta think back to that sacrifice bunt that didn't get down. You could put that bunt down and Auburn's gotta run and it, it looks like... Um, Play on the field is being reviewed for whether the runner at first base left early. You can hear that right there. Arkansas thinks the runner at first left early, so they're gonna take a... Right. Heron grabbed her left arm and was in a bit of pain, so... Yeah, yeah and, and all you can hope is that she's okay and it's not serious. And, you know, Camden's in through a little bit yesterday, like you said, and this is a big ask. I mean, you're not, you weren't prepared to come in right then. You're asked to step into a situation with second and third, and I know there's two outs, but again, tough ask. It's the pitch to Packer misses outside for ball one. Here's a 1-1 to Michaela Packer. It's just outside for ball two. So now ahead in the count, two balls and a strike. And there's a look at Nia Carter, who was the designated player today for the Razorbacks. But now she's got to come in and play right field defensively. That's the thing about these Arkansas Razorbacks. They they can mix a lineup up. They have It's a great pitch right there. You see she took a lot off of it there and got the swing. But, I mean, we're talking about First baseman moving to second base, yeah. catchers moving to shortstop, outfielders moving to, pit. I mean, just athletes up and down this roster. The 2-2 two -two offering to Packer is in on the hands, and now the count's full at three and two. Auburn has not had the lead at any point in this weekend series against the Razorbacks, but they are threatening here in the bottom of the first. Full count. And there is a walk. Second walk of the inning for Auburn, and the bases are going to be loaded for their shortstop, Nelia Peralta. That is a really good at bat by Packer right there. Taking some pitches, making Camden's in come in and pitch to her, laying off of those ones that were really close around the zone. I think that's what's been holding Auburn back offensively, is chasing those pitches before. So great at bat by Packer. Nelia Peralta looks at the first pitch outside. Ball one. <laughs> Making it pretty evident right now that that outside pitch is not going to be called. Goodness. Ball two. As a light rain begins to fall here at the park as well, we're seeing umbrellas pop up along the concourse. Just trying to stay dry watching the game. Foul ball. It's two and one. See Peralta getting herself in a good hitter's count, two and zero oh there, and then ready to hit. And again, Auburn looking for that timely hit. Bases loaded, two outs. Big spot here for the Auburn Tigers. Two one on the way. And that's ball three in on the hands, and Peralta very patient. Man, and I'm telling you, I know 3 1, you're wanting to drive one right here, but with the rain falling, the strike zone the way it is, maybe you take a pitch here. Three balls and a strike. Pitch on the way, and there is a called strike. It's now full. I really have no problem with that. I mean, with everything that's going on there, and and now you get to the full count. She's got to bring it again. Bases are loaded. Runners will be off with the pitch. Hannah Kamenzen wants a new softball. Bases loaded, two outs here in the bottom of the first. Auburn threatening to score. A payoff pitch. Back up the middle and through. Nelia Peralta delivers for the Auburn Tigers as two runs come in to score. Nice piece of hitting there from Peralta with two outs. 
And for the first time this weekend, Auburn has the lead. It really was. Worked herself into a full count and then just hit it hard. Finds its way through the infield. You can see there it's because of how hard she hit it. Got through and then with the runners going, two runs across the plate early for Auburn. So Isis Tresvik will now bat with runners at the corners. Still a scoring opportunity for Auburn. As Nelia Peralta is in between first and second, she'll take that second base bag. Auburn trying to generate a little offense on the base pass. Yeah, I, was, I was just gonna say before that pitch, and first and third, runners at first and third, make something happen again with the rain falling, put, put some pressure on him. Arkansas didn't wanna throw it. 1-0, outside for ball two. Tresvik hard hit to short. Lauren Kamen's in fields and throws. I mean, again, shout out to the crew for finding this. I mean, if you're a fan and you're looking at this going, this does not happen. You do not face a pitcher and then the pitcher gets better the second time. Right. You and, that, and that's what Maddie Pence is doing. She did it last week at Missouri and uh, the Auburn Tigers are hoping she can do it here against Arkansas. The second time already this season that Auburn is in SEC play. Last week they were in Columbia taking on Mizzou and it was Maddie Pinta who was able to win her second start of the weekend. JJ, can you explain SEC softball scheduling to me? <laughs> it's like some start here, some yeah. start there. <laughs> Makes it a little tricky with uh, only 13 teams in yeah. the league. 1-1 one, one is a called strike, it's one and two. Meaning somebody can't be in SEC play every weekend, and that was the case for Arkansas this past weekend. Vanderbilt does not have a softball program in the Southeastern Conference. So it's now two and two. It's Hannah Gamble homered in the first inning yesterday off of Maddie Penta. Maddie Pinta looking to get back right. Hit well to left field. Abby Smith has a beat on it and puts it away for the first out. Last weekend, Auburn was in Missouri taking on the Mizzou tie. Going to change up, but then she can throw the drop ball. Her velocity is obviously there. So I kept telling Coach Dunn, like, give me some words. I've run out on how to <laughs> describe her. And, and I think Coach Dyfel, she's special. She is special, and those stats that you just showed just prove it. One and one. The count now to Hannah Kamen's in, who's now pitching for Arkansas. Here comes the one one from Penta. That runs inside for ball two. We'll see this play out the entire season across the SEC the adjustments that are made game to game to game for all these teams. But to your point, sometimes it does feel like the offense maybe gets a little better the second time seeing a pitcher. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much technology and all of these heat maps that you can look at. I've, I've like never even faced a pitcher and you can tell where they're gonna come. But, you know, <laughs> same with the hitters. It's like, okay, this is where they're gonna swing at pitches. So. I mean, it's a double-edged sword, and it's which team is going to buy out to the game plan. And Camden's and fouls that one off. That hurts. It's like you got it right off that ankle bone. Yeah, looking to buy a little time, but we'll step back in. The 2-2 pitch from Penta. There's a swing and a miss. The second strikeout of the game for Maddie Penta. Tuesday night, it's coming up Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Of course, that means we need the SEC men's basketball tournament to come to a close 
and that'll take place a little bit later today. Auburn and Florida going head to head on the hardwood to be the SEC men's basketball champion. It's March, it's the best time of the year. We got basketball going, softball going, baseball going. Selection Sunday a little bit later tonight for men's and women's basketball across the country. That's right, softball and baseball season moves forward. Here's Halverson, the second baseman for Arkansas. Two outs and the base is empty. And there's a big swing and a miss. And you can really just tell if, if you watched any of the game that Penta pitched yesterday that she is a different pitcher today. Swing and a miss that time and it's two and two. You know, and Arkansas was prepared for this. When we talked to Coach Dyfel, they were, she was like, you know, Maddie Penta is special, but she's going to make a mistake, and when she does, we got to be ready for it. 2-2 two -two pitch. That's outside, and that's ball three. The count's now full. Payoff pitch, hit on the ground to short, Peralta fields, and across the diamond in time for the final out of the inning. Just crazy. So we'll see the first pitch miss outside for ball one. And so the biggest part of that as a hitter is, right, you want to get your foot down before you start your swing. And sometimes for hitters, that's really early. Sometimes the hitters need to get in it in the swing as long as your foot's down before the pitch is coming. And I think she's one of those hitters that if she gets it down too early to begin with, then she puts it down again. A true power hitter in the game. You saw there the percentages say Easter famine in a lot of ways. A home run, a walk, a strikeout. The three most common outcomes for Leck when she's in the batter's box. Started her career playing for Maryland and has now transferred over to Auburn. She's looking for her first hit of the series. I have to say, watching a little bit yesterday, saw her struck out, strike out, and she was visibly frustrated. And I actually kind of appreciated that. It was, it was like, kind of like the fire I think this yeah. Auburn Tiger team needs. Big cut, swing and a miss. It's three and two. Full count, three balls and two strikes. Here's the payoff pitch coming to Leck. It's hit out to right field, long way to run for Carter, but she makes the basket catch for the first out of the inning. She had to run forever to get there. Man, she really did, got a good jump on it. <laughs> Take a look at it right here off the bat, but it just keeps tailing, 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 and then it's a really good job to see it in there. Annabelle Weidra puts the first pitch she sees into play, and it's a soft ground out to second. Two quick outs, the inning. Up the bat. You know, we talked to Coach Dyfel this week. Um, I had some questions just about how she's turned programs around, and, and because it's it's very evident that this Arkansas team, they have a culture, they play for her. You take a look at Coach Dyfel right there, and. I mean, first of all, she was just awesome on the call. And secondly, she talked a lot about, about their expectations, how they keep it steady, and you can just see it on the face. And it's Camdenson is an example of that, right? She came in, was called to do a job when, when maybe she wasn't ready. She was out in the outfield and then gives up a couple runs, and now she's come right back here, got the first two outs, and you can just see it on her face, just very steady and that's what this Arkansas team is not too high not too low an exciting moment yesterday for Courtney Dyfel winning game number 300 as head coach of the Arkansas Razorbacks yeah I, I really appreciated the statement when she said you know what we're just out here running our own race our <laughs> expectations are consistent and we we focus on how we play the game not the outcomes and again watching her teams play you can tell that 
A one-two pitch to Roach. She lays off, and the count's now even at two and two. Rose Roach walked her first time up and scored one of the two runs for Auburn back in that first inning. Two-two on the way, and Roach goes the other way, but it lands foul. It's a 400 batting average right now for Rose Roach. On the ground to third, Gamble will field and throws over to first for the final. The left fielder Reagan Kramer will lead off for Arkansas here in the third inning. Foul off this first pitch. It's nothing in one. Speaking to those Arkansas facilities, the Razorbacks hosted last year's SEC softball tournament. And now this season, the tournament comes right here to Jane B. Moore Field. That is exciting. If you are a softball fan in the area, it does not get any better than hosting the SEC tournament and having all of these awesome teams and great players come in and watch them up close. So the first of two trips back to the Plains for Bree Ellis, the Auburn transfer, and the rest of this Arkansas team. They'll be back at the end of the year for the SEC tournament. 1-1 one, one to Kramer, hit well to center, but right at Packer, and she puts it away. You never really have to worry on a fly ball out to center field if you're Auburn, knowing Michaela Packer's out there. Mm, Packer covers a lot of ground out there for sure, but that that is the second time that you can just hear it today. The ball coming off of the bats is just really heavy. And um, like those those hits yesterday would have been line drives, and now she's she's getting enough of that yeah. movement and that changeup is whenever she wants to pull it out is just so dirty. Lauren Kamen's in is the batter, the shortstop for Arkansas. Quickly falls behind in the count, nothing and two. It's just got to be so frustrating as an offense to just yesterday hit the ball all over the park, have such success, and then come out here and go, what is going on? 0-2 yeah. pitch on the way, and it misses outside. Just off the plate outside, even the count at two balls and two strikes. I mean, and to his credit, he hasn't called it. He hasn't called it yet. So but that is a very, very tough pitch to take if you have two strikes. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Back to Penta, who fields it calmly and throws it over to first for the second out. What a play for Maddie Penta. That was so casual. I, th I think she's acting a little more casual than it <laughs> actually was. Because, <laughs> yeah, that was that was coming for and she stuck her glove out there. and Look at this view. Oh, oh, got it. Look what I found. <laughs> Just toss it over. No big deal. Here's a bunt. Weedra will field, and the throw to first is going to be late. That is Reagan Johnson, who picks up the first hit of the game for Arkansas. I mean, just no chance, right? Like, I'm not advocating never throw the ball, but <laughs> if she gets a bunt down like that, she's safe. And if I'm Auburn's defense, um, oh. And now the umpire's calling her back. Might have hit the ball out of the batter's box. It's going to be nothing in one, a strike mm -hmm. called against Reagan Johnson. So that's exactly what it is. In the box, yeah, or otherwise she'd be out. But, yeah, I completely missed that. O one one pitch, called strike, and it's nothing in two. I like the idea. One time through the order, Maddie Pinta has stifled the Razorbacks, and now Reagan Johnson, the leadoff batter, is like, what can we do the second time to try and find a way on base? Well, if you're Reagan Johnson, usually you put the ball down and you're going to be safe. I mean, she can flat out fly. Hit to second. Rose Roach has got to be quick with it and is for the final out of the inning. 
once again. We'll see Abby Smith in the batter's box. It's the first pitch to third, and Hannah Gamble puts it away. One pitch and one out. Yeah, you know, I was talking last inning. If Johnson puts it on the ground, she'll be safe. And both of these defenses with a slapper, you know, Abby Smith up there and Johnson, they are so close to the batter, but they have to be. I mean, still bang, bang, play at first. Anna Wollers is the batter hitting for the second time today. And fouls the first pitch off. It's nothing in one. You know, one pitch misses outside for ball one. JJ, I talked a lot about Arkansas players moving in different positions and got to give a lot of credit here to Woolers playing third almost the entire year yeah. and then asked to catch Penta and that is a tall task and there she gets one and is able to get it up the middle. That is her bread and butter. When she's hitting her best, she is driving it up the middle. And that one wasn't hit hard, but she's, she's strong. And when she's getting it on the, driving it through like that, able to get it through the infield. It's a hit nonetheless, right? Yeah. One out single for Wollers. And KK McCreary will be the batter for Auburn. And it looks as though Arkansas will make a pitching change. So Auburn's got box right when that drops off. It's really tough to hit, and she had a lot of success with that pitch yesterday. So this is the second time of the weekend that Auburn is getting the chance to see line stock. So you would think this offense would have uh, watched a lot of film on that and make some adjustments because, again, if you're you need to get up in the box and hit it before it drops, or get back in the box and and let it go. If you're living in the middle of the box, you can see there the low 60s. Attacks the bottom of the zone. She's 6-0, 73 Ks in 59 innings, and it's coming from that drop ball that has so much life. Yeah, 15th appearance of the season for Lion Stock by way of the transfer portal as well. Started her career at Arizona State, then went to Southern Miss, and now third college team, the Arkansas Razorbacks. Yeah, and she, she pitched so great yesterday. We, we both kind of thought, you know, maybe she would start today, today yeah. but... On in relief. Oh, two pitch to KK McCreary. This is low and away for ball one. And and that's the pitch that Auburn was swinging at yesterday. And it, it, it clearly is a ball. It looks like a ball from up here. And you're like, oh, well, it's easy to lay off. It really isn't because it looks like a strike coming in. Another foul ball here from McCreary who doubled back in the first inning. That double was Auburn's first extra base hit of the weekend. I think that speaks volumes as to why Arkansas took the first two games because most all of their hits were either doubles or home runs, extra base hits. Again, that's another good take by McCrary, getting herself back in this count. Seventh pitch of the at-bat coming up here to McCreary, who fouls this one down the right field line. Carter won't be able to get to that one. He'll stay foul. Yeah, I thought we were going to see another basket <laughs> catch there off the, off the bat. She's quick. There's a look at Nia Carter, also a transfer portal addition for the Razorbacks. She was at Iowa for the Hawkeyes last season. Called third strike as McCrary was frozen. It's a really good pitch. It's one of those drop balls that she's like, okay, I'm going to throw this one for a strike. You can still see it go down, but whew, that's a, that is a tough spot if you're a hitter. Packer the batter, and she'll take the first pitch for a strike. It's nothing in one. Runner on first, two outs. 0-1. Oh, 
There is a strike, and it's nothing in two. And she is just living out there right now with that pitch. She's entered the game dialed in. O2 pitch to Packer, hops up to the plate, and Wohlers is going to be able to advance to second. So now Auburn's got a runner in scoring position. Yeah, and that pitch right there just reminded me of uh, when Coach Dyfel was talking about Miller and, and how good she is as a freshman back there and how much confidence the pitchers have on her to be able to put a ball in the dirt like that, and she'll put her body in front of it, and then you see it right there. She comes back with that pitch. Very thrilled to be chatting with Arkansas head coach Courtney Dyfel joining us here. Coach, you take a look at your club so far. We just saw line stock come in there and get back-to-back -back strikeouts. You've had to go to a couple of different arms early in this one. Yeah, we have. They they complement each other really well. So this was part of the plan, and, and um, it looks really good, and we have the pot potential to go back to Hawk. We need to. So. Coach, this is probably the Maddie Penta you were expecting to see. What do you have to do the second time through the lineup here? Well, we just need to... Uh, know what we're hunting she's using a good mix I, I think we're getting caught between speeds right now so just know what we're hunting and put good swings on it got a lot of game left best of luck the rest of the way coach thank you for the time thank you so much we pick that is Courtney Dyfel joining us here on set as we get ready to go to the fourth inning it is St. Patrick's Day it's a festive feeling in the ballpark right now and Arkansas is looking to create some offense here in this fourth Coach Stifel's ready for the offense to get going. Look at Carter trying to make some offense. A quick work there from Auburn. Maddie Pinta delivering, and Rose Roach had to sprint to cover that second base back. Yeah, I was going to say. That was harder than it looked. <laughs> yeah, very, very much so, and that, that is a good way when, you, you know, the bats maybe aren't going to get some offense going there. And also something that Auburn hasn't done you know, consistently making the defensive play, and that was amazing. Rose Roach might have been a step or two late getting over there, but Auburn able to find a way to get the out. Ellis drives this one off the top of the wall. A long single for Bree Ellis. That is the first hit of the game for Arkansas. I feel like there's a lot going on in the last couple yeah. minutes. <laughs> we got people moving everywhere, and then we got one pitch, and Ellis is... Ellis is going to find a way to get hers for sure, and she drives it off the wall there. Auburn's probably lucky that one didn't get out. So the freshman catcher, Kennedy Miller, will step into the batter's box. First pitch coming. And it's just off the plate for ball one. Second time through the order today for the Razorbacks, and to Coach Dyfel's point, we'll see what kind of adjustments they're able to make facing Maddie Penta. Yeah, I was I was just thinking, like, again, you you saw her you saw her yesterday, did really well, but she's a different pitcher today. So, what do you need to do right now to adjust to what she's bringing? And that changeup right there, she, Coach mentioned it. She's doing a really good job changing speed. So, Arkansas is going to have to find a way to either look for that pitch or lay off that pitch. It's been a very clean defensive game for both of these teams. Auburn turned three double plays yesterday. They'd love to dial one of those up right now as Miller fouls this one off. You know, if Penta can get a ground ball here, they're in a spot in the lineup where, where they could turn it. The one-two pitch popped up in the air. Wohlers takes the face mask off and makes the basket catch for out number two. Had to stay with it. Only the second time this season we've seen Wohlers play catcher. Look at this. Yeah, I mean, it, and it's immediate. Gets the mask off, tracks it all the way there, runs out of real estate, but it's able to pull it in for it hits the net. It's a big second out of the inning. Huge. Here's Hannah Gamble. And <laughs> what an off-speed pitch there from Penta. Fooled Gamble, who was out in front on that front foot. I mean, it's just such a great pitch. And that's why Penta's so effective. No balls and a strike with two outs. 
low and inside. It's one and one. One one. There's a called strike and Penta's back in control. One and two now. In a really good spot for that pitch there. If if Gamble swings and she gets a lot of it, it's going foul. If she doesn't, it's going to be a ground ball right to third base. The one-two pitch. Just Fouled like at the plate. Check swing from Hannah Gamble. Just a really good spot. So one ball and two strikes with two outs. The one-two pitch, blow it inside, it's two and two. And that's it, that's what Coach Dyfel was talking about, right? It's just changing speeds on it, and that's, that's the pitch they're swinging at that you're not gonna do much with. So really good take by Gamble there. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. A two-two on the way, and a cold third strike. Penta Frozer. Art. We're excited to now be chatting with Auburn softball head coach Mickey Dean. Coach, your team was able to get two runs across in the first inning. How important was that to set up today's game? Well, it's always good to get off to a quick start. You know, uh, we just want to make sure that we continue to build on that. Coach Penta, really impressive again after yesterday and now coming back and shutting down this offense. Well, I don't know if she's shutting them down, but we're playing good defense. She's doing her best to uh, mix speeds, mix locations, and uh, really proud of the way she's performing right now. Best of luck the rest of the way, Coach. Thanks for the time. War Eagle. That's Auburn softball head coach Mickey Dean chatting it up with us right now, and we'll get ready to rock and roll here in the bottom of the fourth inning with Auburn's offense. Coming back to the plate, and it's Nelia Peralta who had the big two RBI single to lead it off here for Auburn. So this pitch misses, or it's a called strike, beg your pardon. It's nothing in one. Peralta, Trezvic, and Leck, the three up for Auburn. And if you're Auburn's offense, I. I I think you can pretty much bet on you're going to see one outside low pitch. So if you can key in on that and drive it to the right side, I, I think that's the only way you're having success off line stock. One ball and one strike to the Auburn shortstop. There's a called strike on the outer corner, and it's one and two. A 255 batting average this season for the junior Nelia Peralta. And a pitch below the knees for ball two. Again, it's it's much easier as an offense if you can lock into one half of the zone and with line stock, you can pretty much lock into the bottom half of the zone and it speaks to how good she is that she's still consistently getting hitters out. Peralta drives one out to center field. A two-hit day for the Auburn shortstop. And it's a leadoff runner for the Tigers here in the fourth. So what a great job by Peralta. Again, getting that drop ball, letting, letting it get deep, driving it more center field, right side. I mean, that's what you're going to have to do. And Peralta, yes, two for two today. We'll see Riley McNemer come into the game to run at first now for Nelia Peralta. See if Auburn can find their third run of the game with Isis Trezvic coming to bat. Two hit day for Nelia Peralta. Yeah, and, and I know how good Penta is pitching, but I'm certain if you're Coach Dean, you want a lot more than yeah. two runs. <laughs> yeah, you'll take all of them against this Arkansas offense. For sure. Trezvic the batter. And she hits this first pitch on the ground to short off the chest of Kamenzen. And McNeemer's going to take off towards third. Riley McNeemer never stopped rounding the second base bag. And Auburn's got runners at the corners. 
What a smart decision there from McNeemer. And she did not hesitate. We, we talked about some base running miscues that Auburn had yesterday, and, and that is the opposite of that. You see the ball in front of you, carry him off, and that is a really tough play. I saw as soon as she froze there and did not come charging that ball, it was going to get in that in-between hop and came up on her. Good job by Tresvik. Hit the ball hard. So runners at the corners now for Leck. And this pitch misses outside for ball one. Tresvik's got five stolen bases on the season running at first for Auburn. And you also have to wonder if Auburn will try to bait Kennedy Miller, the catcher, into making an errant throw. As Leck fouls this one off. We've already seen Auburn try to run that play once already today. Yeah, that was with two outs right here. You got no outs. And Leck up. I don't I don't know that you really want to run yourself out of an inning here, especially one that could turn to be a big inning. You got Leck, Weidra, and then you roll it over to the top. 1-1 one, one offering to Leck is inside. Tresvik will take off towards second, and there's the stolen base for Isis Tresvik, her sixth of the year. Forget everything I just said. Yeah, what do we know, Amy? Nothing. <laughs> A swiped bag for Tresvik, and now two runners in scoring position. 2-1. On the ground to third, Gamble will field, and McNeemer is caught in a bit of a rundown. Miller will make the tag. Riley McNeemer is going to be out. Tresvik will be safe at third, and Lex now at second. So a good defensive play made by Arkansas. Well, here's the thing. If you're offense, the, I mean, Auburn has second and third to start this play, right? You're McNeemer. The worst, the best thing that happens is you score. The worst thing that happens for Auburn, you got second and third again. I mean, you gave yourself a chance to score. You stayed in it long enough. Let got to second base. No harm, no foul. So second and third with one out. And Weidra in the batter's box. Tries to lay down a bunt. But it's a strike. Arkansas going for the series sweep today over Auburn. Auburn's looking for their second SEC win of the season. As Weidra puts this ball in play on the ground, back to third goes Tresvik. Weidra is going to be safe at second, and it's an identical play. Holy cow. I mean, it really is, but now, now you got second and third, two outs. I mean, really in that position, you're hoping that you can drive something out into the outfield and get a run in. But again, we got a two out runners on situation here. See if they can capitalize. Back to the top of the order in Rose Roach who drives this one well to left center field. Johnson on the run, but it's Kramer who makes the catch for the third and final out of the inning. On to the fifth. I mean, it really comes down to she, she mastered a pitch, and then the next year mastered another pitch, and then third year mastered, and now can throw all of those pitches in any count. And again, you cannot discount how hard she throws and then can just pull the string on it at any time. That is just so difficult if you're a hitter. Oh, one pitch is low for ball one. As we see Hannah Kamens in, in the batter's box. This is a big inning, JJ. This is a big, big part of the game for both teams here. It's, it's getting a little late, getting to the bottom half of the lineup. The first inning out here is huge for Auburn, and on the flip side of that, leading off this inning with a runner would be huge for Arkansas. Yeah, credit to Arkansas on the bottom of the fourth. Auburn had runners at second and third with zero outs, and we saw Arkansas get out of the inning without giving up any runs. A swing and a miss there from Cameron Zinn, and that's going to be another strikeout today for Matty Pinta. Each and every year, Pinta is getting better. Look at this. And that is, it's just crazy to see and think about. And, and then again, on that last pitch, 
goes to the dirt there. I want to give credit to Wohlers. It hasn't caught Penta, which is very, it's difficult to do. I mean, and is able to keep it in front and get the out, but 3.58 ERA and then drops it all the way down to a 1-3-1. And this is against SEC opponents. I mean, it's just nuts. Four strikeouts on the day now for Maddie Pinta. She is up to 106 on the season. 106 strikeouts in 79 innings. And another web gem play for Maddie Pinta. My oh my. Some days be like that, JJ. <laughs> Everything going in the glove. You're pitching great, balls back up the middle. Again, just gonna reach, throw it out. I mean, you can see how she falls off. <laughs> I love the casual toss so over there. So calm. <laughs> Epic. Reagan Kramer looks to start some offense for the Razorbacks. Two outs and the base is empty. Saw Kramer fly out to center field her first time up today. I thought one of the real interesting things about Kramer is she recorded at least one hit in all five of Arkansas's postseason games last year, which just, I mean, to me, that just speaks clutch. Yeah, clutch, biggest time of the year. Competitive. And then on the flip side of that, did not commit an error in all of SEC play. Three zero, the count now. Even back to this past inning, defensively in left field, we saw her make the final out of the inning when Auburn was trying to drive in those two runs. Kramer able to make the catch on the run. I, I gotta tell you, when that when she caught that ball, I like held my breath. <laughs> Johnson came from Opelika. Oh yes. Ran, ran all the way, and then I mean, unbelievable communication because I thought that was in the gap, and then. Didn't great, worry great about catch. they're going to collide. And yeah, I really thought that was a possibility. Two outs here in the top of the fifth. It's a three and one count. Addie Pinta looks at her wristband. And now Kramer will fly to left. And Abby Smith puts it away. Razorbacks down in order. It's the fifth inning stretch here off ball. And they ain't much better than Coach Tarina there. Yeah, and, and as she's the coaches doing say, it's an inside look to what we're doing. Yeah. Did, did you happen to see um, when they played Texas, it was like an 11 a.m. game. It was Middle of the week. What, yeah. a, what a cool idea. Elementary <laughs> school day. I mean, it was full with a bunch of kids. Abby Smith puts it on the ground to short. It's a ground out to start the inning for Arkansas. A big start to the season for LSU. This SEC is going to be really challenging the entire season. I mean, just, it's crazy, right? But that LSU team, is they, they are built different. They can swing it, they can play some defense, and they can pitch every fast of the game they are excelling at right now. Anna Wohlers is the batter here for Auburn. This pitch is hit out to right field, and Carter makes the sliding catch. Took a hit away from Anna Wohlers. Have a day. How about Nia that Carter. play? I mean, she goes casual into foul territory with the basket catch, and then right here, diving in, making sure she has it. Love the reacts. Thought we were going to get a slow motion of it. Yeah. <laughs> KK McCreary, the batter here for Auburn. She'll see this first pitch come inside. Was three pitches and two outs for Morgan Linestock. I mean, real quick work, and all of a sudden. I mean, we're talking about LSU. And yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Foul ball here. Getting later in the game. One and one, the count to Auburn's KK McCreary. On the ground to third, Gamble's got it. And that's the end. It's been a fun start to the year in the SEC here. It's one thing to, it's one thing to say, you know, 
LSU's doing good, 24-0, and but it's another thing to see it. And then you said Emily Kennedy, and you look at those stats, 13-1, and a yeah. .67 ERA. I mean, everyone knows how great Maddie Penta is, and you compare those stats there, and that's – that that's, match, that's a reason why a and M is, is as good as they are. That matchup's coming up next weekend in College Station. Auburn will be traveling to Texas A&M. And we would anticipate games one and three of those series being a battle of those two pitchers. Here's a base hit back up the middle for Arkansas. That's Ryland Hedgecock, who's in a pinch hit opportunity here for the Razorbacks. And that's just the second hit of the game. We talked about it in the fifth, Amy. Maybe we were just an inning delayed, but a good start there for Arkansas to get the leadoff runner on. Well, I was going to say, Linestock goes out there, five pitch inning, kind of switches the momentum there, and is like, hey, here we go, offense. They they huddled in between innings, got a pinch hit up there, does a job, and now you've, now you've got Johnson with a ton of speed up yep. there, runner on, no outs. This, this, is, this is a big spot. Wohler is able to get on top of that quickly, and Hedgecock stays put at first. I mean, if you're the Auburn defense right now, you're just thinking, find an out somewhere. Only the second hit of the game for Arkansas. But to your point, they've turned it back over to the top of their order. Matty Pinta is now behind in the count, two balls and no strikes. And I, and I cannot tell you how hard it is to defend a slapper who's got that much speed and a runner at first base, it's, it's very, very difficult to cover second base and play the slapper. 2-0 pitch, bunted, and Auburn doesn't have a play to be made. Credit to Reagan Johnson, the speed she has and where she was able to bunt that softball. Back-to-back -back hits now for Arkansas. They're in business here in the sixth inning. I mean, it's again, it's just so hard, and you see she puts that in no man's land, and. There's no chance Weider's coming from third base and fielding that and throwing her out. Again, with the runner at first base, the defense were playing back a little further than they had in her first two at-bats. And now Arkansas is in a good spot in their lineup. Here's Nia Carter, who takes the first pitch low and away for ball one. And Carter's had a day in the field. I know she's up here wanting to do the same thing in the box. Transfers from Iowa, she led the Big Ten in batting average last season. Really talented hitter. 1-0 pitch coming from Penta. And that's outside for ball two. And of course, Bree Ellis is looming large in that on-deck circle. Yeah, and you can just kind of, you can feel it. You can feel it settling in in the ballpark right now, how big this out is. Here's a look at Ellis. Ellis is the SEC Player of the Week. Maddie Pinta is the SEC Pitcher of the Week. And Auburn softball head coach Mickey Dean wants to have a word with his team. Ball game. The 2-0 pitch. There's a called strike. Maddie Pinta needed one badly. She did. She did. And, and, and not only did she throw a strike, she threw it in a great spot. I mean, she didn't leave it out over the plate. And comes another big pitch. 2-1. Hit on the ground to second. Rose Roach has it. And Auburn will get the sure out at first. And that's all you can ask for right there, right? You got your ground ball. You made sure of an out. And... I am really interested to see how Auburn plays this with first base open and Bree Ellis coming to the plate. Because it's real easy to say Walker, right? Yep. But then you got Kennedy Miller on deck. Penta Ellis. The first pitch is low for ball one. What a great job by Look Wallace. at Bree Ellis already this weekend. First at bat against Maddie Penta. And, and then in the second game, another one. So big and strong, right? I mean, it kind of looks like a fly ball off her bat, and then it just keeps going. Tresvik almost had that one. And they are clearly pitching to her. Yeah. I Out mean, off at the plate, one and one. Auburn has said, we're going to put our best against your best and see what happens. We've talked about it all week. Yep. This happened for two seasons yep. in practice very frequently. 
that Bree Ellis would be able to face Maddie Penta and vice versa. Maddie Penta facing Bree Ellis. But yesterday was the first time ever in a real game that we got to see these matchups. The former teammates now going head to head. The 1 1 pitch is outside. This is why this sport is so fun, JJ. Yeah. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. Pinta versus Ellis. Good look at both of them there. And a foul ball hit the right. It's two and two. Hear the crowd getting behind Penta here now. I mean, you see Johnson there at second base. You know a base hit scores her easily. Two balls and two strikes. Here in the top of the sixth. Slowly hit to third. Weidra Fields, no play to be made. It's an infield single for Bree Ellis, and Arkansas is on the scoreboard. Man, sometimes <laughs> it's just not fair if you're Maddie Penta. You come in and you make a pitch, get her way out in front, and she's able to hit it there. And of course, the defense was playing back because you got Ellis, so she can beat it out. That is tough if you're Maddie Penta. You make the pitch you want to make, get her out on her front foot, and now it's a 2-1 game. So many times we'll see Bree Ellis hit the ball a million feet. Very rarely do you see one stay inside the infield for an RBI single from Ellis, but that's just what happened. Ali Saki into the game to run it first. And now Arkansas's got runners at the corners. So yeah, JJ, you take this one. Is she going? Is she stealing? I think so. Called strike, it's nothing in one. You haven't seen Wollers throw down to second too many times this season. Only one other game behind the plate. One out and a runner on third. I think it's worth the gamble. I do too, I mean, you take the double play out of the equation then. Popped up, foul territory, long way to go for Trezvik and she can't quite get there. But Penta's now ahead in the count, no balls and two strikes. Yeah, real credit to Penta after that at bat from Brie Ellis. She gets the miss swing and able to get an RBI and on base comes back and goes 0-2 to Miller. O2 pitch to Miller. Line to third and caught by Weidra. She'll step on the bag as well. What a double play from Auburn's third baseman. Oh, oh my. My goodness. <laughs> a dangerous hitter in the batter's box, and Auburn gets the double play to get out of the inning. Michaela Packer will lead it off now for Auburn. The Tigers now find themselves three outs away from picking up a win. But before that happens, you know this offense wants to add more runs. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, they've been playing a tremendous defense behind Penta, kind of some miss hits getting there. And, but yes, they, they want to turn it on offensively here and add at least one more run. Third plate appearance today for Packer, who has walked and struck out. She's ahead of the count, two balls and no strikes. This one slowly hit to third. Packer will be able to beat this one out down the line. An infield single for Michaela Packer. Auburn has the leadoff runner aboard. That's some speed on the bases for Auburn. That's, that's a real, I mean, however you want to get on, right? You, you find a way to get on and sometimes turnabout's fair play. Mickey Dean's talking with the first base umpire here. Brian Crochet, but play on. Nelia Peralta, a two hit day at the plate. She'll hit this one hard to third. Gamble to second for one, on to first. It's a double play. 
defense the story in this one. How about that? Man, the momentum changes that just keep happening. Miss hit, you get on base and then hit the ball hard. And Arkansas able to turn it. You see it here. I mean, absolutely just hit screen and then perfect turn. Up the bat. Number three. Isis Tresvin. This has been a heck of a game, JJ. Fun to watch. So Tresvik is the batter here for Auburn with two outs and the base is empty. And a pitch outside for ball one. Trezvic still looking for her first home run of the season after hitting nine last year. The 2-0 pitch on the way to Trezvic. There's a called strike. Going to the seventh inning, Arkansas will have their five, six, and seven batters due up in the batting order. As Tresvik pops this one up right behind the plate, and Kennedy Miller puts it away for the third. To take a look at our game summary so far, three different pitchers for the Razorbacks. And Maddie Penta yet again going for a complete game win. Yeah, if, if you're going to sum it up, that's how you do. But I, I don't know how you sum up this game. There's been a lot of, for a 2-1 score, there has been a lot of momentum changes, a lot of fun defensive plays, hitting the ball hard. And now Auburn three outs away from getting a win here. Hannah Gamble will lead it off. 0 for 2 on the day for the Razorbacks third baseman. Gamble did hit a home run yesterday off of Maddie Pinta. The 1-1, one, one, high and inside for ball two. Well, that's the thing. It might just be three outs, but there's no letting up on this Arkansas offense. It, Penta needs to key in a little more. The defense needs to key in a little more. 2-1, hit well down the line, but foul, and now it's 2-2. Two and two. Speaking of defense, Auburn has brought a new first baseman into the game as well. Amelia Lex started the game at first, but there's a look at Axe Milanowski, who's come on defensively here for the Tigers. I think I would put a lot of money on a changeup right here. Two balls and two strikes. Fouled off. That's why I couldn't hit, JJ. <laughs> Pinta sped it up that time. I'm in there thinking change up, and then she throws it 70. No shot. Yeah. No <laughs> shot. A 2-2 again. And it's popped up in the air. Axe Milanowski makes the catch for out number one. How great is that? You come into the game and the softball finds you right away. Every time, I, I, it happens. I think it happened to Nia Carter yeah. earlier. So Milanowski makes the play for out number one. Hannah Kamenzen is the batter. Started the game in right field, then pitched for a little bit, then moved over to left field. And Penta has won that battle every time today, striking her out twice already. 90 pitches on the day for Maddie Penta. There's a swing and a miss. It's nothing in two. Two pitch, fouled back once more. Man, it's fun to watch when she gets in these counts and knows it's gonna be her pitch where she can put it, can dial it up, go out of the zone just a little bit. 
Another 0-2 offering bounces up to the plate. It's one ball and two strikes. Another good job by Wooler there. I mean, you get a swing at strike three, she's keeping it in front. Yep. That is a tough thing to do. Especially, again, especially if you've been playing third base all year. <laughs> a ball and two strikes. Here comes the one-two pitch. This one's popped up in the air right behind the plate, but that's going to get out of play. So one ball and two strikes. And another foul ball. Good at bat. Here by Camden. I got, got down 0-2 and not giving up. I mean, find a way to get on base. It's only a one-run game. Seventh pitch of the at-bat coming up. Pinta versus Kamenzen. Kylie Halverson waits on deck for the Razorbacks. And another foul ball. There it was, finally. I'm like, where is the changeup? <laughs> Auburn two outs away from their second SEC win of the season. The one-two, high in the zone. What a heck of an at-bat Hamilton is having right now. Pitch number nine coming up. The 2-2 two -two. hit foul by Cammons, and I'm not sure how she got a bat on that. I, I'm not with either. With that one running in on the hands. I mean, but she's seen everything. She's seen the rise ball, she's seen the drop ball, she's seen the change up, and she's just continued to foul him off. So double digits. This is the 10th pitch of the at bat. 2-2. Two -two. Hit to right, Tresvik charging in, can't make the catch. Kamen's in off to second. And Arkansas has a runner in scoring position with just one out. Heads up base running from Hannah Kamen's in. That, I mean, that that is the bat of the game right there. Fouls it off, fouls it off, and then is able to drive it. Heck of an effort out there by Tresvik. It's not able to pull it in and sees the ball in front and able to get to second base. So Kylie Halverson will be the batter due up for Arkansas. A runner in scoring position. A run would tie it for the Razorbacks. I mean, JJ, with everything we've seen today, we knew this was not, uh, not gonna be a one, two, three inning. There's Riley Cloud, who's the pinch runner. Five hits for each team. Pitch number 100 of the day on the way for Maddie Penta. Mm. It's a tight spot there, but it's ball one. It's very close. And now you're going to get to hear all the people who came out on the St. Patrick's Day to watch the game. It gets, gets a little more intense this time of the game. One ball, no strikes. The 1-0 pitch. Hit on the ground to short. Peralta's got it, but no throw to be made. Cloud falls down. He's in a bit of pain. Oh, it's no. the second out of the inning. Oh, goodness. But Riley Cloud is hurt. Yeah, you, her cleat got stuck up under there when she tried to stop. Mm. Man. It was, a, it was a really good play by Peralta, faking the throw there to first base. But man, you just were really hoping for Riley Crawford right now. Caught between second and third. Auburn shortstop Nelia Peralta 
faked like she was going to throw to first and didn't. You see Riley Cloud up to her feet. Goodness, that is the second Arkansas player today who. So we're going to look at this again in real time. Yep, deep in the hole there. And I didn't, I was thinking to myself, don't throw it because I didn't think she was going to get the out. Right. And then was able to fake it enough to, I mean, I think, I think Cloud was off the base far enough anyway to get the out there. Just a really good heads up play by Peralta. Again, changes the whole complexion of this inning, takes the tying run off second base. So two outs now, Auburn and out away from victory, and Reagan Kramer will be the batter. Back up the middle off of Pinta's glove, and everybody's going to be safe. Pinta had made a couple of nice plays in the circle. That one just got to her too quickly. That ball was hard hit. Yeah, you, like you said earlier, a couple of them have found her glove, and that one did not. And line. Ryland Hedgecock was a pinch hitter for Arkansas in the sixth and came around to score their one run of the game. She got a hit off of Maddie Pinta. And there's a called strike, it's nothing in one. I mean, with, without to be too dramatic, it's, it's Hedgecock or not. I mean, right. you do not want to roll it over to the top of the lineup here. The number nine batter in the order for Arkansas. A no one pitch misses outside. One ball, one strike, two outs here in the seventh. Auburn with a two to one lead. The pitch fouled back. Arkansas now down to their last strike. Now the infield can get really, really big with two strikes. Knock it down. You got to force at any base. And Maddie Pinta can throw whatever she wants to here. Any pitch she wants. Fans on their feet. The one-two pitch. Hit foul. Auburn is looking to avoid the series sweep this weekend against Arkansas. A one-two pitch just off the plate outside for two and two. You know, you know Arkansas is going to go down here if they're going down with a good at bat. Two balls and two strikes. The 2-2. Two -two. Hit on the ground to third. Weidra's got it. The throw across is in time. Auburn wins today by a score of 2-1 to one over Arkansas. And that woman right there, Maddie Pinta, now stands alone atop the record books. Yo, let's take a moment to appreciate The ones who heal us when we're not feeling great They're the ones in white coats With stethoscopes saving lives, giving hope Never losing scope From the ER to the operating room They battle illness, dispelling gloom With steady hands and hearts of gold They navigate the chaos, bold and cold they're the healers, the guardians of health In the face of adversity, they stand with stealth With knowledge and skill, they fight the fight Keeping us strong in the darkest night In the midst of pain, they bring relief With compassion and care, beyond belief They listen to our woes with empathy Prescribing remedies, setting us free From pediatric boards to geriatric care They show compassion, always there with expertise and dedication they strive To keep us healthy, to keep us alive They're the healers, the guardians of health In the face of adversity they stand with stealth With knowledge and skill they fight the fight Keeping us strong in the darkest night So here's to the doctors, the 
unsung heroes Whose hands hold lives like precious kilos In the symphony of healing, they play a part Mending bodies and souls with love and art